Let's look at the month end and year end closing activities for SAP Financial Accounting. In a typical organization, you will have a lot of month end activities to do. So usually the month end activities, you might not perform exactly at the end of the month. Some of these activities will be performed at the end of the month. Some of these activities will be performed the first few days of the next month. Now this is a list of some of the common FI related month end activities. There are some more might, which might be missing in this list. And there are certainly a lot more other modules month end activities, especially for the CEO module in terms of running the assessment cycles, adequation cycles and so on. And then you have for the other logistics modules where to open and close some uh, MM posting periods. Then you have for PS modules where you might have to settle some as, uh, WBS and projects and so on. So in terms of the FI posting activities, I'll just go through a few of them. Uh, for any journal entries, if it's journal ledger journals, you can use FB50. Or any other common journal entries, you can always use the standard FB01 transaction code. You need to open and close the FI posting periods. This is to ensure that when you're in the new month, the previous period should be closed. You might give access to only a few users. Uh, you can set up a separate authorization group and they will only be able to post to the previous periods. Uh, you need to perform the depletion run for all your assets. It's always advisable to run your depletion run overnight, uh, not during office hours, if, especially if you have a large number of assets, because it'll take a lot of system memory, uh, and overnight there won't be many users who are on the system, so then the depletion run can actually run much faster. And of course, you should know the depletion run is always run as background job. You need to maintain your latest exchange rates in the system. So we actually do the foreign currency balances, revaluation of the foreign currency balances. That is for your open items for customers and vendors and also the other GL accounts. Example, like you, if you have a foreign currency bank account, the actual currency exchange rate will get derived from the latest rate that you have maintained and your balance sheet and payroll statement will show the latest rate, uh, latest exchange rate conversion for your home currency. You also have your accrual and deferral entries. Usually it's not done at the end of the month, but sometimes mostly the middle of the month or beginning of the month. But nevertheless, there will always be some other accounting uh, entries which might have to do at the end of the month for accruals and deferral postings. So use the FBS1 transition code to post the accruals and deferrals. And you can always do the reversal of the accrual and reversals, which will be occurring in the consecutive months. This of course can be at the beginning of the month or end of the month, depending on how you have set up the reversal dates. Then you might be having recurring entries. Now to set up the recurring entries, you have to use the FBD1 transaction code. The recurring entries, as we discussed earlier in some of our presentations, that is for a period of time, you can schedule a recurring entry run, uh, and you can predefine the settings in that, what's the debit entry, credit entry, and so on. And then once you set up the recurring entry, it is stored in a document, and every month you can start doing the posting the recurring entries. That's for using the F.14 transaction code. Then regrouping the receivables and playables program, that is the new, is the new GL transaction code, FAGL F101. This is of course if a vendors have debit balances or customers have credit balances, you need to show them in the correct side of the balance sheet. And if it's a company code requirement or your country requirement, then you'll have to process using this transaction code. GRIR clearing is for goods receipt and invoice receipt. This is mostly to do with the logistics module. So that's why we have not elaborated in the previous presentations. But in the logistics module, when you have goods coming in or when you have invoices coming in, you use the GRIR as a temporary account to store those information and then later you can clear it using F.13 transaction. This way with all the postings and with all the adjustment postings, then you can download the, actually you can execute and download the PNL balance sheet uh, format. The PNL balance sheet format will depend on the financial statement version which you have created. So in this transaction code F.01, you need to specify your financial statement version and as per the financial statement version, you will be able to execute the balance sheet and the PL statement. And you can also download that into your system and uh, with that you can review and you can pass it on to external accounting uh, managers or other relevant parties and you can sign off on the figures. So that will be a completed balance sheet and PL statement for that particular month. Now let's look at some of the year end closing activities. Now year end, you'll be doing it at the end of your financial year. So at the beginning of the new financial year, you'll be doing all your year end closing activities. 
and when you close here in activities is actually you have to follow all the month end activities all